and it's been an uneasy peace. And we know it's all been an uneasy peace. And nobody's pretending it's not been. But it has been a peace. And the things that were happening in 1987 or 1988, and remember those terrible incidents in 1988 in Gibraltar or in Milltown Cemetery or with the two corporals? Awful, awful things which showed the worst of Northern Ireland. They were all consigned in the most to the past. So we did have peace. And we have got peace. And in that, things have changed. But what we didn't do in 1998, and we've failed to do ever since, is address those big ticket items. Such as legacy. It's a festering sore that attacks us at every single minute. And now it's become a political tool for one community to bash another community through the two main political parties. The fact is, Doug, isn't it? And I would find this to shame us as well. Your two parties were the biggest parties in 1998 for a number of years afterwards. Those issues weren't addressed after 1998 as well. You, you let a metaphorical magpie into your nest. I, 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 absolutely, Peter. And I don't sit here uh, uh, and, and say that I'm blameless or my party's blameless or anybody's blameless. The point I make is it was never dealt with. The Irish language was never dealt with. Education was never dealt with. Division was never dealt with. We run an apartheid education system here in Northern Ireland where we deliberately keep Catholic children away from Protestant children at the earliest ages. It's, it's absolutely terrible. And I've always said to bring communities together, bring people together, then children need to play together. They need to educate together. They need to work together. And they'll get to understand each other. That's really where I think we haven't. So where I agree with you that what has changed or nothing has changed, we have peace that has changed. What we haven't got is a community or a country with a calm sense of itself. Can, can I quickly jump on the end of it? I thought it was quite funny when we talk about being a polarised society. I stood in the last um, general election and I remember, because I always put the posters up myself, I hate posters, but I put them up and I was up the, the ladder putting a poster up and this guy came up and says to me, Doug, good luck to you. You're going to be the best man for Upper Ban. We need MPs like you because you can see the other side and they're decent people and you'll make sure that we can all work together. I says, thank you. He says, I can't vote for you though. Um, because we've got to keep them inside. Um, uh, and and that's, that, that's where we are. It's incredibly difficult to, to, to counter that, except for um, to show respect. Um, and, and I've got to say, I, I've got huge differences uh, with all political parties, um, and they'll have differences with me. But I've got to say, I respect difference. I respect where they come from. I respect uh, what they want to achieve. Um, somebody who wants... A, a, a unified United Ireland, if they do it peacefully, that is a fair ask. Uh, I'm an Ulster Unionist, I want to stay part of the United Kingdom, I do that peacefully, that's a fair ask. You have to respect that. Uh, and your point at the back, if I can just really just add to that, you know, what you said I think is absolutely right. You know, we need to have a shared education, and I said that earlier on, because we need to move ourselves forward, and that's the silver bullet for me. That is Seamus talks about lemons. Um, politics, and he's absolutely right, but we also have this horrible win-lose um, politics as well, where if you as a political party give way in any shape or form, your class is losing, and if you get what you're after, your class is winning, and as soon as you get that, you stand up and you applaud your, yourself for winning something, and, and that's what we're finding, for example, with the Irish language, and that's why it's so indetractable, it's because if Sinn Féin was to get an Irish language act as an example, and I'm pleased I'm only using this as an example, they would be jumping from the rafters to say, we won. And if the DUP were to give them an Irish language act, they would be classed as losing out. Okay. That's the terrible way of, of, of doing politics. I want to go back to this one. Um, could be Sir Douglas in 30 years' time, it could be Lord Beatty of Upper Ban. <laughs> uh, regardless of what happens to you, what do you think will happen to this part of the world? I, listen, I, I, I'm kind of pessimistic, um, and I think I will remain pessimistic uh, until uh, Brexit is done and dusted. Uh, and we've moved beyond it, and we've got it out of the way, and we find our way in the world uh, as the United Kingdom uh, outside of the European Union. Now, I voted to stay, that's not the point. The point is we're moving to leave, and I think we need to get that out of the way. So I, I think I would probably remain pessimistic till, 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 till that's gone uh, and done and dusted. I'm also slightly ashamed 
uh, as I sit here as well. Why am I ashamed? Because I'm elected MLA, I'm a legislator, and I'm not doing my job. Uh, and that is an absolute shame. Shame on me, shame on my party, shame on all the political parties that we can't get together and sort this out for the good of the people of Northern Ireland. Uh, and, and I will remain shamed uh, until we finally uh, get together. I'm an Irish unionist. The shamrock belongs to me, the Irish language belongs to me, the Gaelic games belong to me, St Patrick's Day, the sash, God save the Queen, the Orange Order, they're all mine. It's part of Northern Ireland, it's part of what I believe in, all of these things. And I respect all people in this, uh, in this country. And I understand that some people uh, have, have visions which <coughs> take them in a completely different direction from me, and I absolutely respect that. And I will only become optimistic is when we start to absolutely respect difference. When we do sort out the education, when we can stand on the same football terraces and cheer on the same team, regardless of where you come from and what society that you live in. And I think that will come because I think it will come because I think the people are getting absolutely bored with the political classes and I think they will drive change. And the sooner they drive change, the sooner this will be a better place.